Welcome to uh, Unit 2, Lesson 2, Part B here. We are going to be solving in Part B. We're going to be solving multi-step equations. So now we're to the final step. You're almost there anyway, multi-step. We're going to include some distribution, which is multiplication. You just multiplication over several terms. So this six is multiplying. I put a little dot right here. This six is going to be multiplying to the first term. And then you go back and that six is also multiplying to the second term. This is a nice situation here where we don't see a uh, number here. So you can pop a one in here, make it negative one times these terms. So the negative one's going to switch the signs because a positive, if I remember my multiplication rules, um, they're without, uh, it's positive times positive is a positive. And then if they're different, we get a negative, negative, negative times a negative is a positive. So those are our multiplication rules here. Uh, we're also going to include some fraction work. So your eighth graders and you can work with fractions and decimals at this point. So we're gonna get started here. Uh, we're gonna remember how do you solve, how do you solve equations? How do you solve equations? In one variable, um, you do the, you distribute. This distributive property, distribute. That's multiplication. You combine like terms. And that is addition. And then you finally, at the end, you get to inverse operations. That's when you're stuck and you can't do any more distribution. You can't combine any like terms. You go to inverse operations. At most, you have to do three inver do three. You have to do the additive inverse. When you have variables on both sides, you have to do the additive inverse twice. And the very last thing you do last is multiplicative inverse. And that is uh, multiplying by a reciprocal. Multiply by the reciprocal of the coefficient. If you need to screen capture that, this is also the answer to the essential question. So this is the answer to the essential question. And that will get you uh, two points on your CSA. So screen capture it if you want. Keep it forever. That's how you solve equations. So let's get to it, solving some of these equations here. We're going to distribute. So we're going to have 6 times negative 2 is negative 12. Don't forget there's a this is a variable term, so the G remains. Negative 12. Positive, remember this is a positive 6. Positive times negative is 6 times negative 1 is minus 6. Negative 1 times 13 is negative 13G. Negative 1 times positive 2 is minus 2. Now, simple enough, we've done some distribution. We can't do anything else. We can't combine like terms, so we're stuck at variables on both sides. And we know that... It would be easier to add 13G to both sides. That's what I would do. Let's suppose that instead you added 12G. We'll just see what how that plays out. It's a worse strategy, but sometimes people do it. It's a zero. We slash it, slashy. We bring down this term. Now, this term includes the negative sign, so it's negative 6. Negative 13G plus 12G. You can go back to your rules of adding and subtracting, but signs are different. We subtract the two numbers, and we keep the sign of the larger number. So we get negative 1G minus 2. This just comes down. Again, the negative sign is with it. The term is negative 2, so you bring down the negative 2. 
We're at a two-step equation. We're going to add two to get rid of the constant on the right. Slashy. Again, signs are different. We subtract the numbers, keep the sign of the larger number. Negative 4 equals negative 1g. And we're almost done. We can multiply or divide by negative 1. Let's divide by negative 1 to switch the sign. Do it to both sides. Both signs switch. 4 equals g. I, again, I keep my variable on the right-hand side. If I solved it this way, and my variable's over here. It would have been a little easier if I had done it alternately a different way. Okay, so let's say here I have negative 12g minus 6 equals negative 13g minus 2. Okay, so there I am right there. I've got my thing. It would have been way easier if I had added. It would have saved one step. 13g. Bam. I have negative 12 plus 13. That's 1g or just g minus 6 equals negative 2. Then add 6. And it's a lot easier because we get g equals 4. Less steps. So apply better strategy. is applied and it works out better. The better strategy saves you a step. So let's take a look. Now we have a little bit more sophisticated here. You can change, you can keep this as uh, 0 0.5 or you could take 0 0.5 and you can change it into a fraction if you want. It's up to you. I'll just leave it as 0 0.5. I'm gonna distribute as my first step because I know that I always distribute if possible first and then combine like terms. I am going to have some like terms after I distribute. Let's see what we get. We get 3 plus 0 0.5 times 4 is 2a. Zero, positive 0 0.5 times positive 8 is plus 4. 9 minus 2a. Now, in this next step, I'm going to combine like terms because I have two terms that are alike here. I've got a constant, which is here. If you want to label them, you can. Here's a constant and a constant. If you want to, you could go through and label constant, variable term, constant, constant, variable term. Again, C is for constant. VT is for variable term. So I can combine the two constants on the left. I don't do inverse operations at that step. I do want to write my variable term first as a rule. So I'm going to write the 2a. I'm going to add, remember, this is a positive 3. The sign is in front of it, but not written. Positive 3 plus 4 is plus 7 equals 9 minus 2a. Now I'm at the step two vari uh, variables on both sides. I'm going to add 2a to the, because I want to keep it positive. And that allows me to slash out. 2a plus 2a is 4a. And then I'm just bringing things down, making sure I include the sign. Plus 7. This is positive 9. Remember, there's a sign in front of it. So I'm almost done. I subtract 7. Slash. 4a equals 2. I have to divide by 4. And I got an answer of A, still on the left, my variable, equals one half. And it's I double check all my signs. I could pop it back in there. I could do it mentally, too. I want to circle my answer. If I put one half in there, I got four times a half is two, plus eight is ten. Ten times 0. 0.5 is five, plus three is eight. And then here I would have 9 minus 2 times a half. 9 minus 1 is 8. So, yeah, this is the right answer. So here we have a multi-step equation. You, you, it looks overwhelming initially, but it is, you're already, a, when you have variables on both sides and some combined like terms, this is only one more step. So just keep it in order. Just think about, okay, well, I've got to distribute first. Okay, we'll find the distribution. Here's a dot for multiplication. 
I'm going to multiply it. I'll multiply fully out so you can see that it's just a numerator. Remember, this is 2 over 1, so the 1 is multiplying times the 4. 1 fourth R, okay, plus, we'll just do the multiplication, 10 fourths R and not, not reduce it. 2 times negative, positive 2 times negative 1 is minus 2. Don't forget to distribute there to both terms. Okay, these are alike terms. This variable term and that variable term. The variable terms are alike. And so if they're alike, we can combine. This is not inverse operations. It's just a combine together. I get 11 fourths R minus 2 equals 1 half R minus 5. And now I'm just at variables on both sides. However, I can already see that I have fourths and halves here. So I need to convert one half into fourths. So I'm going to multiply by two over two, and that gives me two fourths. So I'm going to rewrite this 11 fourths r minus two, two fourths r minus five. That allows me now I have common denominator. I can easily subtract 2 fourths r. So I just have a variable term on the right and the left. And so all I'm doing is an additive inverse. We're going to do it once, and then we'll have to do it one more time. 9 fourths r minus 2 equals negative 5. Then I'm going to add 2 to both sides because I'm at a two-step, and i got to get rid of this constant slashy 9 force r equals negative 3 and i'm almost done i look for my my coefficient and i multiply by the reciprocal of just the coefficient just 9 force i'm going to take this number i'm going to flip it over and multiply by 4 ninths the whole point of doing this on the left I don't have to do any cross canceling or anything. I know that that is my goal was to get to one R. So I'm just going to write R. And here I get uh, negative three times four is negative 12 over nine. And you can reduce that um, to, uh, they both share a factor of three. So it's negative four over three. You just circle the whole thing. It's always nice to put or in here. Okay, so we're going to go to pay the back side. Let's count how many steps that was. This is about the maximum number of steps. We have distribution is one step, combined like terms, two. We rewrote this. It wasn't actually necessary. Oh, yeah, we combined like terms. We converted that to two fours. I'm not going to count that as a step, but we did rewrite the equation. We did the additive inverse. That's the third step. We did the additive inverse again to simplify it, and then we multiplied by a reciprocal. So five steps. That's about the max. And that's what eighth graders standard is. That you were able to work with some fractions, and earlier you worked with a decimal. So you're getting there. You're at eighth grade level. So you have some more complicated problems on the back. Um, don't get overwhelmed. Remember to just do some multiplication. This problem looks a lot like the one on the front, but remember to distribute. I'll get you started here. Distribution, 1 half R plus 6 fourths R minus 2 equals 1 fourth r plus 6. Now you're going to be adding to halves here, but then over here you're going to do it with force. It might be a smart strategy to change this to 2 force initially. So then you can combine your variable terms together. So you have a, a like variable terms here and oops, there. These, uh, these are alike variable terms. 
So combine. So you're going to combine these together in the next step. Then you'll have variable terms on both sides. So you'll need to, to uh, probably subtract one fourth R from both sides. And then you're going to be adding two to both sides. And then finally you multiply by the reciprocal. Okay. Again, here this, uh, you're going to get a nice number here because this 15 and five is going to, uh, it's going to cross cancel. You're going to be left with an integer. So, so just remember that you're multiplying 15 times four, so not 15 times the five. You're going to get your 60 over five here. 15 times negative two is negative 30. So make sure you get your sign correct. And then you're just variable terms on both sides. You actually can combine your negative 30 plus 24. So you're going to get negative 30 plus 24. What does the rule say? subtract and you're going to be doing this on the right side subtract and keep the sign of the larger number and which is the 30 is the larger negative 30 is larger so you're subtracting these two and you're keeping the negative sign and that's going to be here on the right again Working with a decimal, so you're going to be distributing. If you need a calculator, you can use a calculator, but essentially 0 0.2 is equal to 1 over 5. It's going to, you're going to get a nice integer here, but you will get a decimal on the right. So let's see, 0 0.2x plus 10 minus 6. These are alike. You're going to combine the 10 minus 6. The larger number is positive, so zero point. Then you get one point two x, um, and then twenty times point four. Zero point four is equal to uh, two fifths. So if I multiply twenty times two fifths and cross cancel, and four eight. Okay, so you have some combined like terms here. When you do the additive inverse. It's going to be easier to subtract 0.2x. It's going to work out really nicely and leave you with a 1x over here. And then you've already come, you're going to be combining these guys together. And you'll have a plus 4, and you'll be subtracting 8 over to get solve it for x. And then here we have a slightly um, different 0.25w minus, and you'll need a calculator for this 0 0.35 times 4.3.25 times 4.3 and I don't know what that calculates to be at the end you can add that number over and then just divide by 0 0.25 both sides okay well good luck you've done it if you can do these problems you are on grade level